Early in stage one, when working with a highly reactive couple with an attack, attack, I'm right, you're wrong cycle, beyond attunement and validation, what is the most effective way to make space for them to listen more empathically to each other's pain without getting triggered by their vulnerability and striking back, defending, dismissing? So my first thought is for we clinicians, for yeah. us not to expect them to be able to take in each other's pain and be empathic towards it or hold it empathically or empathetically. So it might just be too soon for that. When we try to help one partner hold the other's pain and they get triggered, that tells us that we have to turn up our role as a temporary attachment figure. We have to do more in terms of processing with each partner and not expect them to be able to process with each other or take in the other's experience. The bandwidth on the inside of each of these partners is full. And we just can't expect one to be empathic when there is no intrapsychic resource to allow for empathy to emerge. Like empathy is not something we can just cognitively tell ourselves to have access to. And then I could imagine a process conversation or many about what blocks your empathy. All humans have it to some degree or another, and I'm needing it to come into the room. It's part of building safety, but there are blocks to empathy. And that would be a lovely, maybe more cognitive conversation, but perfectly appropriate for stage one. Like what blocks your empathy from coming alive. You know, you feel it on the inside, but then you tell yourself, oh no, don't be empathic. He'll mock you or she'll or they'll, whatever people do when they're surprised by their partner's behavior. I love this because we are the temporary secure attachment figure. So especially in stage one, we're not looking for the partner to be empathic, warm, loving, caring, responsive. It's just not going to happen. So we do all that for each of them, both of them, and give them each equal time. Track the triggers. Like people getting triggered in session to me is really worthy of precious time and data collection because I need to know what's triggering them. We're triggering them into defenses, which means we're putting the relationship in an escalated pattern. And if I'm doing an intervention that's just not well-paced or well-attuned for them, they'll get triggered because they're human. Not that the clinician is doing anything wrong, but that's when we collect data. Oh, so sorry. Let me retract that. A bridge too far for another time. I just asked something of you and I saw the start of a reaction and I want to slow down and care for you. I want to come closer to you. That was really hard to hear. Just even what I just thought I would say for next intervention was just too much. You got overwhelmed. You got maybe even triggered. Is that an okay word? What's happening on the inside? And I quickly turn up my role as our attachment figure, surrogate processor, and I go close to them when a partner gets triggered, whether they get triggered by my intervention or interacting with each other. I love your question too. What's happening on the inside? And they may answer, he's a jerk or she's a jerk, but the question points their attention towards their inner world, even in stage one. Yeah, exactly. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.